There's only one way to start the show, given the news that dropped last night, and that is to look at my good friend on the right of me and tell him, Jeff, good morning. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. It's a great morning. Monty Williams, the new head coach of the Detroit Pistons. Thank you, Tom Gores, for all you do. Thank you for your service, for getting this done. And we talked about Monty. We've been talking about Monty the last couple days, uh, really the last week. I didn't think this could get done. And, and a lot of it had to do with Monty's interest. I figured, hey, Monty Williams still being paid, still owed about $20 million from the Phoenix Suns. But guess what? When Tom Gores wants someone, he gets them. And it's been proven, and I can't wait to get into it. Uh, I got a lot of things here written down. I, I prepped my ass off last night just to try and convince all of you and give some reassurance to why Monty is the right guy. So I I'm excited. It's a great day. Six-year deal, $78.5 million. My goodness, Tom Gores, finally. Imagine. I mean, look, we just have to talk about why there's excitement, okay? The Pistons were the favorites to land Kevin Ali as of two days ago. He was the favorite. The betting favorite. I would have killed myself. But no, now I'm here. <laughs> I get to still do a show. I get to see my son born. This is great. This is more than basketball. This is hope for life. Four years in a row watching Dwayne Casey coach this team and it get nowhere. 18 wins a season. Fucking garbage. Hope. That to me is the biggest thing. Do, are they instantly a better team? Absolutely. Do they really need to overhaul the roster? Absolutely. Do they need to trade a few people that are already on the roster currently? Fuck yeah, they do. And I think this sends a message, not just to Pistons fans of, hey, we're serious about winning. To me, it's more than that. It's a message to Troy Weaver. Bro, we're not going to fucking Sam Press to you and let you just draft a player and another one and another four and another eight and another ten. And oh, you finally ended up with SGA. Oh, and now you ended up with some really young cores. And now it's finally here ten years later. We're not fucking doing a ten-year rebuild, bro. So you don't get to just keep drafting and trading for potential like the James Wiseman trade. You can't just keep holding on to maybes like Killian Hayes. Go build a goddamn roster that you can fit and build around Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey. That to me is the most important thing. You know what you're getting out of Monty Williams? You're getting a guy that has an identity on offense, a coach that will hold his players accountable on defense. Uh, you can cite the DeAndre Ayton issue. <laughs> you want to start there with Monty Williams and Phoenix. He got Phoenix to a finals. I think this guy is a good coach. Uh, is he the best coach in the NBA? No. But he's one is of. Is he one of the seven, eight best coaches in the NBA currently? Yeah, I think you can make that case. So now it's on Troy Weaver. Now the pressure's on him. How do you build a contending roster in the next few years around what we think is a potential star backcourt with Kate and Ivy? And we could all agree, too. Monty uh, didn't uh, go out the way I think we all expect him to go out in Phoenix. I don't think he should have been fired. Uh, but thanks, Matt Ishbia, for your kind service as, as someone who's from Michigan. So I appreciate that. And, and with Tom Gores hiring Monty Williams, it does show that they want to win. And they're serious about winning whatever price tag that comes with Tom Gores wants to win. So that's much appreciated. We know, you know, at least over the last couple months, it's been it's been dark days for Pistons fans. And now waiting for this news, for the new head coach of the Pistons to be announced. And guess what? Monty Williams, one of the best coaches in the NBA period. He has the most wins since 2021. So by default, at least in the regular season, having playoff success as well. I know some of those series didn't end necessarily how we all expected them to end. But for the most part, a finals appearance. He was up 2-1 in the finals uh, before losing. But regardless, Monty's a guy who works well with young players, works well with guards. To see what he did with Devin Booker over the last couple of years, one of my favorite players in the NBA to watch. You got to see his growth and him thrive. And it's not just him, Cam Johnson, Michael Bridges. What Monty has done for a ton of young players and later in the show, I'm going to get into the offensive philosophy of Monty and how that could you know, help the Pistons greatly. And, and thanks to um, one of my good friends, Jack Kelly, on Twitter for, for breaking that all down. But overall, this is a message being sent from ownership. Tom Gores, we're sick of losing. 
and Monty's the first step. The other step is free agency. Troy, he's going to handle the rest of it. The draft, free agency, bringing in talent, that's his job. But hiring a coach, I don't give a damn what the price tag was. The, the coach does not count against the cap. So anybody saying, that's a lot of money for Monty Williams, you had to pay for him. And you had to give him a, lo a longer term deal to at least show him we'll be patient with you. A six year deal could be up to, you know, seven years, eight years, just to get the specifics of it. Um, it could be up to eight years and $100 million with incentives and team options. You had to give him a lengthy deal. You have to at least pitch to Monty, hey, we're going to be patient. This is, we're, we're in this for the long haul. And knowing who Monty is and what he's done in this league, I think it's a perfect fit for the two guards that we have currently with the Pistons, Cade and Jaden Ivey. What a great mentor for those two. And we talk about you know helping these guys play together. It'll be their first season next year, first full season, hopefully, playing together. Who better tend to start that off than Monty Williams? He's going to help speed this process up a little bit. You look at Monty Williams, he got fired, right? He's being paid to sit home. Why would he take a job in Detroit? All right, well, they made him an initial offer. He said, no, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. And then they gave him a record offer. The most money ever given to a head coach in NBA history. Uh, yeah, I'll listen. And you can not like it. You can say, oh, it's, it shouldn't be about the money. Monty should want to come. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, you know how it works. All right. That's how it works. I got a team without Kevin Durant to the NBA Finals in the last three years. Winning 50-plus games a year. I didn't ask ownership to throw away my entire roster for a guy who, in recent years, has been in liability with injuries in Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's an amazing player. But like you said, Monty Williams works so well with young players. It's a young roster. Some of you may think this is hope for Killian Hayes. Don't even want to acknowledge <laughs> that. Well... Don't even want to acknowledge that. I want Killian Hayes. You know, remember the movie Madagascar growing up? Yeah. You know those boxes that they would trap the animals in? <laughs> yeah. I want Killian Hayes trapped in one of those boxes, and I want him sent to fucking Shanghai. All right? Well, a lot of these players, too, like Killian Hayes, uh, we're going to find out a lot, and in, in, especially for a team that I think will win 30-plus games. The leash is a lot shorter now with a lot of these players. Once you bring in Monty Williams, things change a little bit. Now, I'm not saying they're going to make the play and make the playoffs this year. I'm not saying that. I think they'll be better. But Monty's job is to get these guys on track quicker than we would have thought. We still thought they were years away, depending on who they hired. If they hired Kevin Ali, there was a lot of uncertainty. But this tells me that Tom Gores is like, hey, I don't want any unproven commodities. And that's okay. I mean, a lot of teams go that route. Uh, the Bucks just went that route with Adrian, uh, Adrian Griffin. But the Pistons don't want to do that. Uh, they, they want someone that's experienced, that has a resume in this league, that other teams were, were you know, going after. And Monty Williams, I love it. You get arguably, not, I would say, the best coach available on the market. Yes, you have to overpay for him, but this doesn't count against your cap. You will be okay. Regardless, Monty Williams, even in free agency, will help attract players. Like for, for someone like Monty with the amount of relationship he, relationships he has in the NBA, coaching Team USA, coaching all the superstars he's coached, uh, having a relationship with Troy Weaver back to OKC, he's had an experience in this league with a lot of different high-level players. In free agency, a part of it when you're a free agent and you're looking at a team to go to, part of it is, who am I playing for? And now you have Monty Williams at the helm, one of the well, best you know coaches what? in the league. That's intriguing. We'll get to timeline in 15 minutes, okay? But I need to know, is Devin Poker a possibility? I think that's what most Pistons fans want to know. He can opt out in a year, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, I'd have to double sure, check that. Pretty sure he can opt out in a year. Devin Booker to Detroit, I think, is the saving grace for this franchise. But let's say it doesn't happen. What does the timeline look like now with Monty Williams? And I think a lot of it depends on Troy Weaver. You have to look at Isaiah Stewart. You have to look at Corey Joseph, for God's sake, please. Mm -hmm. You have to look at these guys and say, what are they? And what are the Pistons, honestly? Not to shit on anybody this morning, but like, what are the Pistons? They're a young team full of players that on really good teams are probably sitting 7th, 8th, maybe even ninth on the bench in the rotation that's just the reality right so it's it's a team of guys that aren't even starters in the nba let alone the sixth man they're just role players that you need to have depth players but that's not how you win games i need k to turn into an all-star 
need Ivy to turn into an all-star. Of course, that's the best case scenario. Right. But I can't just rely on that. I need to bring in good basketball players. How do I do that? Is it in free agency? Do I package Bogdanovich and that fifth overall pick and I, I go chase somebody? I'm really all ears to what Troy Weaver. And again, don't be bullish. It's not just a six-year, $78 million offer that brought Monty Williams here. There was a plan that I'm sure was agreed upon between the core front office ownership and Monty. And the conversation went something along like this, I believe. Here's a huge contract offer, Monty. Here's what we're going to do. Whether it's trading the pick, drafting X player, uh, packaging the pick with Bogdanovich, let's say, and somebody else, and we're going to move for a player like this. I think you're going to see a lot of activity from the Pistons over the next two to three months. Yeah. no, I would, A lot of activity. I would agree with that. This roster, I think, is going to be changed completely, I think, sooner than later. And if I'm Monty Williams, I'm really happy with my backcourt. But I know I need defenders. I need shooters. I got size and Duran. But I'm never going to play Wiseman and Duran at the same time. I'm not Dwayne Casey. I'm not a fucking idiot, right? No. So... I'm not going to do that. And maybe if I do, it's for five, four, five, six minutes, maybe, depending on the situation, depending on the team. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. I think there's hope this morning. Oh, wow. I'm very happy. Wow, that, for you to say I that. I was ready to jump off the Ambassador Bridge yesterday. Yeah, well, here we are now. Dude, Monty Williams I, is your head coach. I told you, Twitter has been the devil to me. <laughs> All of, Every time I go on my feed, whether either it's about transgenders all right, some dude getting shot and killed, teenagers fighting, or Kevin Ali preaching to the choir. Okay. It's always one of the four things, <laughs> and I'm sick of it. So fix it, Elon. You Thank you, Tom <laughs> Gores. I fucking love you, man. That's the shit I'm talking about. Take your franchise seriously. Mm-hmm. And you want to talk about Tom Gores? I mean, let's be honest here. He bought the team relatively cheap to what it's valued at now. Right. You get Monty Williams in a winning situation. I mean, this this is literally peanuts to Tom Gores compared to the value that it's going to bring over the next four or five years in terms of the team's overall value as a franchise. Right. So if Monty can bring your, great move. your franchise into being relevant, yeah, the, the being the highest paid coach in the NBA, you're not going to think about it. This reminds me a lot when Tom Gores got Stan Van Gundy, because remember, the Golden State Warriors were trying to get Stan Van Gundy before they hired Steve Kerr, which crazy to think about that, by the way. Uh, but before he you know, took that Golden State job, what swayed him to the Pistons was Tom Gores said, you know what? will give you uh, the opportunity to, to be the general manager. Like, Tom has always shown when he wants somebody, he'll go he'll get them. And, and this is another, I think this is a great hire. So all credit to Tom and the Pistons for getting this one done. We, we both like Troy Weaver, right? Yes. No issues with Troy. Want to see more killer instincts in terms of building a, a legitimate roster, especially now that you have a Monty Williams. But you, you got a good group here. And I don't want to hear anything about John fucking Beeline or Dwayne Casey again. All right? Why? They're in stupid front office roles that nobody gives a fuck about. Okay? I don't give a shit. That shit drives well, me crazy. Clearly you do, because you're talking about it now. Because I'm so. frustrated with people's comments. It drives me nuts. I see everything on Twitter. What, I see everything in the chat. Don't worry about it. I see everything. You fucking idiots. His assignment was to tank. Shut the fuck up. Go fucking cry to your mom and suck on her I mean, tit. We'll take a break when we get back.